Hey Plant Fam! Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is kind of part of my jungle, I guess. We're sitting in front of my Hoya cabinet. If you are not new here, thank you for coming back. I appreciate you for still being here. If you've watched a few videos and you haven't subscribed yet, definitely make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss anything from me in the future. Um, and so that you can see all of my old stuff too. I've got lots of stuff. If you've got plant questions, there's playlists. If you still have questions, ask me. <laughs> so anyway, um, I've got some plant chores to do today, but I'm sitting in front of my Hoya cabinet because I really wanted to talk to you about some new growth that's going on inside my cabinet and what I've been using and what I've been doing differently to encourage new growth. And then after we do that, I wanna show you my Sport Variegated Monstera and how that is doing and show you um, in more detail like all the things that you should look for um, in a Sport Variegated plant. And I wanna show you the plant that I got from Equigenera, looking all cute um, out of the plastic so you can like actually see it. And I don't know. I gotta check on and I might need to water some of this stuff up in the cabinet in the loft and things like that, but we'll see where this goes. There's some things that need to be repotted. There's like always tons of stuff to do, but that doesn't mean I always <laughs> get to doing all of it in one day. So we're gonna do what we can and I'm gonna start with showing you some of this Hoya growth. I just watered these yesterday so they don't need to be watered, but I am going to be showing you um, just a few, just a few that are special. Okay, so this is the bottom shelf of my Hoya cabinet currently. Um, I have had some of these for quite some time, and some of them just were just, they just weren't growing. Or maybe they were slightly declining, like this Hoya Parasitica Dark margin or black margin it had leaves these vines were wrapping around this trellis and one by one they just kind of started to die back and there really wasn't anything that I could figure out that was wrong with the plant I treated it I repotted it I did like all of the things to try and help this plant be happy and it just didn't it just kept declining didn't want to be happy um, and eventually it stopped, like, and just has been stable with the leaves that it has right now for a while. But it recently just decided to put out this one. And I got pretty excited about it because it hasn't done anything for me in quite some time. So that, again, is the Hoya Parasitica um, Dark Margin or Black Margin. Another one that I've had for a while that has just like not really done anything for me. It started as a cutting is this Hoya Fitchii in this cute little pot. Um, so I did have like, I don't know, like a vine of it, I think when I first got it and I cut it back and propagated it a few times and shared some cuttings with people. And it did just recently pop out this leaf for me which I was really happy to see this newer leaf come out, but I was even happier to see this whole new growth point coming out from the base of the plant. So that's really exciting and I'm definitely not mad about that because this one has just kind of been one of those ones that I keep cutting it back and cutting it back and hoping that now it's gonna take off and it'll give me like one leaf, maybe after cutting it back and then that's it <laughs> it's like it just stopped growing and this vine uh died off apparently so you can see it, i cut it it grew a new vine here gave me a new leaf and then it died off so i'm really hoping that this one down here is going to do a lot better help if i got rid of that mealybug i don't know where it went that's fine oh there it is it's okay. I always keep my Q-tips right here. <sighs> Got it. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's Hoya Fitchii starting to put out a whole new growth point for me. So, definitely trying to keep it 
well watered and fed so that it just continues to thrive. The other one in here that's probably the most exciting is this Hoya Joy. This is the Joy Splash. And this one, shortly after I got it, developed this fungal issue on the leaves. So I cut it back, I repotted it, I treated it, I cleaned it. All of the things, you can see I cut it here. And um, just it's just been sitting for quite some time. Just working on its roots apparently. It's got all these roots coming out of the bottom. Um, and I was just always kind of bummed because this is such a beautiful plant and it got a little bit ruined by those spots. So when I saw this new leaf popping out in here the other day, I was so excited. It looks like a little baby and it's so cute. And I have no idea what's gonna happen if this is like a vine that's gonna continue because it's literally just looks like a leaf and like nothing else but I'm just still really excited about the idea of having one of these leaves from this plant that is not damaged so I'm very very excited about that that is my Hoya Joy splash and I am going to share with you obviously what I've been using to help encourage all of this growth I mean some of these are newer but they are growing as well this little guy has got some growth i've got tons of growth on my stuff in fluval i did um take some cuttings like i cut the top off of this lacunosa and just plopped it back down into the fluval to try to make the plant more full um and there are definitely some in here that still are being stubborn and are not growing for me this imbricata threw out another vine <laughs> so hopefully it'll grow my finlaysonii back here put out another little baby leaf which is super cute um and i'm definitely just like seeing a lot of new growth there's new growth coming out of the base of this plant here um and like solid new growth you know what i mean and i i kind of felt like it all started to pop off at the same time so are there any up here that i wanted to show you oh my mellifluia Hoya mellifluia this is a really cool one with these pointy dark leaves put out this whole new tendril here so i'm definitely excited about this um the verticillata here put out this vine here with the new leaf and it looks like it's gonna continue to work on some more oh my gosh this little guy Hoya zambles zambales i don't know how you're supposed to say that Put out a couple of new leaves. How stinking cute. It's like a little mini Wayetii. This one is growing like crazy. Tang Chong and Sis. Absolutely love it. One of my new favorites for sure. Um, but those are newer. I mean, this one threw out this big old vine for me here. Um, and as you can see, like some of them definitely are struggling, like this Bella and stuff like that. So I'm hoping that um the stuff I've been using is going to help encourage a whole bunch of new growth. This one too. I cut it recently. This is my Hoya pubic Corolla and it gave me this whole entire new thing here. So I am so not mad about that at all. And everything's just like doing much better than it was before. A lot of these were for sure struggling. Um, there's lots of new growth here on this parasitica. Um, this is the heart leaf splash. Gave me this new leaf above my finger here. And this vine is fresh as well. So, um, definitely good things. Good things happening up here too. There's tons of new growth. Look at how big this leaf got on my Hoya Bahoy. I am obsessed I am so obsessed with this plant. This is one of my new favorites as well. It is absolutely stunning. I think it's just really happy in medium light right here because it's next to the window, but it's not really like directly in the window. Do you know what I mean? So these Hoya here are kind of just getting some really nice, bright indirect light throughout the day and they're loving it. This Calcina always has like little baby 
mealies on it that I, I spray stuff and they die, but then like the mealies are still there. Like they're dead bodies, they're still there. Anyway, that's not gross. Um, yeah, everything is just doing really well. This New Guinea ghost is like completely taking off. I'm gonna need to attach it to something so that it can continue to grow. Um, but yeah, like just lots of, lots of new growth. And now I'm going to tell you what I've been doing differently that I think is causing all of this new growth. Okay. So here is what I've been using. It is from Urban Gardener and it is called Super Growth Elixir. I'm just going to leave it on the screen for a second so that you can take a screen grab of it if you want to, but I am going to have it linked down below for you guys. I also have a discount code. I did talk about these when I got them and like my first impressions of them, but now that I've been using them until literally there's nothing left in here, I have a lot to say about this. And <laughs> I think it's very interesting because I did a deep dive on the ingredients in here. Um, this is the Urban Gardener Super Growth Elixir, and it is a foliar spray. And it comes like already mixed up for you. And it has got water, castile soap, yucca extract, chida sand, Norwegian sea kelp, vitamin C, green tea extract, neem, uh, neem oil, geranium oil, rosemary, and thyme. And... I was curious, I mean, we know that like kelp is a really great fertilizer for our plants. It's got tons of micronutrients. I use it in my water to water in my plants, but I was reading more about using it as a foliar spray. And it says that studies have shown that both soil and foliar application of seaweed extracts results in an increase of overall growth blooms and size of flowers in most plant species it increases and stabilizes chlorophyll in plants which results in darker greener leaves and increased sugar content in tissues and fruit which like doesn't matter to us as much unless you like to lick your hoya blooms like i do <laughs> um seaweed extract increases plants resistance to stressors such as excessive heat wind drought conditions and more so that is kelp. Those are the benefits of kelp, not only in your soil when you water, but also as a foliar spray. And that is one of the ingredients in here. The other one that I was really curious about is the chitosan. Chitosan? Chitosan. I don't know if I'm saying it properly, but I'm going to read this to you really quickly because this is very fascinating. It enhances the ability of plants to survive in times of heat or cold stress and drought. It can give plants the ability to grow with less water and can accelerate growth and germination and improve the quality of flowers and fruit. Research has shown that chitosan include, induces tolerance and protection against stress. So basically this is helping your plant be stronger in stressful situations. Um, it helps moderate intercellular processes, big words, and mediate water uptake and deal with stress caused by poor hydration. Basically, the cells in your plant are just going to work better. It also acts as an important catalyst in plant enzyme production and respiration. As busy plant parents, we don't always get our watering schedule right, so the foliar application of chitosan helps us smooth out the rough patches and keeps our plants healthy and hydrated in less than ideal watering conditions. So that's just one of the ingredients in here, the super growth elixir. There's also yucca extract, vitamin C, green tea. I find this all really fascinating because green tea, like we know has health benefits for us, but apparently it can also boost and promote overall health and energy on a cellular level in your plants. There have been multiple studies that have reported that the foliar application of green tea of green tea has led to increased growth performance in almost every quantifiable area. That's kind of like that's kind of a big deal to have something that will increase growth in in every single like way possible. So like growth of roots, growth of the plant, growth of fruit, flowers, like all of it. 
in every single way it increases growth. Green tea is rich in biostimulants and minerals, including magnesium, calcium, iron, zinc, and selenium. Very fascinating. And then vitamin C, because that's something that we like know to take when you feel like you're getting sick, right? It's good for your immune system. So this says that scientists from the University of Exeter and Shimane University in Japan have demonstrated that vitamin C is essential for plant growth. Vitamin C provides protection against the harmful side effects of light during photosynthesis. Think about that for a second. Protects against the harmful side effects of light during photosynthesis. So I find this really fascinating because vitamin C does naturally have protective properties to UV damage for us, for our skin. Like it is a natural SPF essentially. Um, and it's really fascinating that, I don't know, I never considered that plants could get like stressed out or like damaged from the sun the way that we can. Do you know what I mean? But like we know that obviously because if we leave them out in the bright light, they burn <laughs> just like we would if we didn't put SPF on and went and sat out in the sun all day. Um, but I just never really thought that vitamin C would or like some sort of SPF would be beneficial to your plants. But apparently it is. And I find that very, very fascinating. Rosemary works as a great um, deterrent as well as peppermint for pests and stuff like that. So all of that is already in here and I find it really fascinating and really interesting. And I'm a really big fan of this product. So they did send this to me for free to try and I have been using it and I'm going to continue to use it because I think that it really has been helping my Hoya grow. Granted, I have been using kelp in the soil as well, but I've been doing that for all of my plants. The only thing I've been doing different with my Hoya is spraying this on once or twice a week. And it's actually really fun to do. I wait for my lights to go off in the cabinet at night and I shake this up and I just, it's very satisfying. I feel like I'm doing something good for my plants when I do it and it smells good and it's already just in here. It's a very light mist. You don't have to like go crazy. You just need a little bit and I've been loving it. I've been switching off with using the um, Say No to Bugs spray that they make as well. They also make a leaf shine one that I'm gonna <laughs> be using that I've been using on all of my new plants because it just makes everything look so good. The leaves look so shiny and healthy. Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about really quickly. I'm very, very, very pleased and I'm very, very excited. And I will definitely be continuing to use, I need to get more of <laughs> this product because I really do think it's helping my Hoya grow. And now I gotta test it out on other plants. I've sprayed it on a few other plants here and there, but I haven't been as consistent um, as I have been with my Hoya. So I will leave it linked down below for you guys. I have a discount code if you want to get yourself a little bit of a discount and check it out. Why can I not do this? Anyway, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to show you my sport variegated Monstera now and talk a little bit about sport variegation. Um, yeah, and just show you her because I cleaned her up with the Leaf Radiance Spray and she looks so good. Got it. <laughs> she looks really good, so I'm going to show you. Okay, so here she is. My gorgeous Sport Variegated Monstera Deliciosa. I'm pretty sure this is large form. Um, I know there's a few different ways to tell, but I don't know those ways, but I don't, she just looks like she's going to be really big. So I'm assuming <laughs> this is a large form, but I don't actually know. So obviously when I saw this, I was like, holy crap, but also let me take a breather and check out the rest of the plant. Because if that's the only splotch of irrigation, I don't want to get my hopes up that it's going to continue because sport variegation is just 
a natural mutation that happens in some plant tissue and sometimes it's just like a one-time thing and the plant doesn't really have any type of mutation like in its genetics if that makes sense so sometimes it's just a one-time thing and it doesn't happen again but then I started looking at, there's two plants in here. One of them is not variegated. I started looking at the lower leaves. So I was like, okay, there's this plant. The next leaf down is this one. Doesn't really look variegated until you get a little bit closer. You can see a little bit of splotching there. But I wanted to check out the, let me turn you so you could see a little better. There you go. Do you see the striping in this petiole here? And then it gets even thicker right here. So we kind of have like two stripes. And I, I followed it all the way up and I was like, okay, then there should be variegation here. And then I turn sure up, there is one little teeny tiny <laughs> little speck there. But it does have some really nice striping in the um petiole so then now i'm going to go to the next leaf and this is the next leaf and you can see we do have some nice little chunks going on on this leaf not a ton but definitely enough <laughs> and i'm looking then again at the petiole on this one and i'm not really seeing any striping but you can see the variegation on the back of the leaf here too and just because there's variegation on the back of the leaf doesn't always mean it's showing on the front. See, there's nothing there. But it is back here. So there is quite a bit of variegation on that leaf as well. And then I'm following it down again to this leaf. Doesn't look like it has much, just a couple of little spots on it. But then it does have some on the back and a ton through the petiole here. You can see this white stripe. Um, it kind of just looks like a lighter green. In this lighting, it's hard to get it to focus, but there is, there you go, this white stripe that gets even whiter and thicker as you come down to the base of the plant. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And then this is another old leaf on the plant. It's got lots of variegation on the front and on the back. Um, so I find this plant to be just really fascinating because you've got all this striping on the petioles and then not much going on on the leaves. And then on this one, I don't see really any striping, maybe a little bit along here on the petiole, but boom, you've got this big chunk that came out and it just happened to be on the front of the leaf instead of on the back of the leaf. Um, which is really nice and I'm definitely not mad about it. So that's something that you want to be mindful of when you are looking for sport variegation. If there is consistent striping throughout the petioles and some consistent variegation, even if it's just a tiny bit on each leaf, that's just indicating that there are some pretty strong genetic mutations happening in this plant and the probability of it continuing is much higher than if it was just one little splotch on a new leaf especially if you've got a little splotch down on an old leaf and all of the new ones came out with nothing then i would say you probably don't have, you know, anything exciting, but this, this is an insane find. And this leaf is finally starting to harden off and like get a little bit darker green. It did get a little bit damaged because, you know, it was at lows, you guys, while it was unfurling. But the only logical thing that I can think of as to why nobody noticed that this plant was variegated is because without this new leaf, this plant at first glance doesn't really look variegated. This leaf is kind of hiding under here. 
and like it could just be bird poo you know what I mean at first glance somebody might think that's bird poo because there is bird poo on a lot of the plants in big box stores so and there's a non variegated one in here even though it's beautiful just unfurled this leaf which is gorgeous but it's not variegated um, I think it just got overlooked and this leaf probably had just popped out not long before I got there and nobody had noticed it yet. Like, what are the chances that something like that would happen? $22.98, you guys. I paid for this because these weren't new plants, the lady said. They hadn't gotten new ones in. What they did was take a few from inside and put them outside, she said. So if you missed that video, I walked into Lowe's and this was the first thing I saw. Sid just sitting there outside among like all the other floor plants. And I was like, wait, what? I was literally in shock. Like it took a little while for it to sink in what had just happened. But I did use to clean her up because if you're wondering why she looks so much better, the Urban Gardener Leaf Radiance Spray. So I like to spray this on and just let it sit when I get a new plant and then I go over it with a microfiber cloth and wipe it all down before I treat it with anything else. So I've been using this as kind of like my first thing that I do with every new plant that I bring in because it does have a lot of beneficial stuff in here like the Castile soap and the peppermint oil and everything that is going to help like kill anything on contact that's in there that like that might be on the plant that I don't see um and it just cleans it up really nice the plants look really happy and healthy after I clean them up with the leaf radiance so again I'll leave this link down below they do sell like a three pack if you want to try each one which I do recommend um it's just a better value and then you get to try all of them I've really really been enjoying these products um Plus, they're made in America, they're cruelty-free, eco-friendly, and totally safe to use. Doesn't kill bees or butterflies, all of that good stuff. So, small company, really, really nice people. I, I cannot say enough good things about it, but I'm going to stop because you guys are going to get tired of me. Um... What else did I want to show you? Oh, my philodendron that I got from Equigenera. Oh, this thing is just gorgeous. That big chunk. Big chunk of variegation. Okay, here is the philodendron that I picked up from Equigenera. And I can't remember the name. It's like Sherbert. Sherbert, Sherbert the eye. Of course, it's not on here. I'll put it on the screen. Um, I don't know what I did with the tag, but <laughs> I went there to get heterocraspidon. I didn't really love either of the plants that they had of it. The new growth kind of like died off. Um, and I know that these are imports, so I didn't really want to have to rehab the whole thing. You know what I mean? So, and I saw this and I just thought this was really cute. And I loved that the leaves were already ripply on it and it does have an intact leaf unfurling so I just feel like we have better odds with this one to acclimate it and even though this leaf will probably come out kind of wonky um as long as it's like healthy even if it's like cosmetically like not cute the next one after that should be good so I went with this one instead because I had like a one plant like kind of budget <laughs> for myself for that day. I was like just the just one plant, which is why I want to go back because there were so many other beautiful things that I would love to look at again and snag. Um this one was from the Equigenera pop-up at Shakespeare's Garden in Brookfield, Connecticut in case you missed that video that was um, uploaded yesterday so go and check it out if you didn't see it is definitely worth a watch um, there's just so much to see it was very overwhelming and overstimulating but it was absolute heaven like so many beautiful plants 
Um, but this is the one that I decided to go with. They had the Equigenera pop up um, over there. So definitely um, go and check that one out if you haven't seen it. But I wanted to show you what it looked like all nice and cleaned up. I used the leaf radiance on this one too. It was the first thing I did when I pulled it out of the plastic. I sprayed it on there and I let it sit for a little while and then I came back and I just I scrubbed these leaves good and you can tell when you scrub them and you look at the towel it's like really dirty so they just look so much better and so happy and hopefully I can keep them healthy but again it is an import so I am treating it kind of that way it's still in moss um, but it's pretty well rooted in the moss so we're just going to get this one up in the greenhouse and, you know, wait for it to grow. I absolutely love it. I love a long leaf. I love a ripply leaf. So obviously I had to have it. It's so cute. Okay, there's a few more plants up there that I want to give you um, some updates on and they probably need to be watered. So let me grab my watering can kind of dark up here so it's hard to see but all of my Hoya are doing all right they definitely need more light I mean they get light from the window but they're not getting like a ton um so I definitely need to get a grow light in here but because they're not getting a ton of light I don't even think they need to be watered to be honest oh uh, well that's a bummer Ugh, that sucks I've been growing this for so long rooting it in moss and it wasn't doing anything so I put it in water and now it's just a goner oh that's such a bummer that was a beautiful Hoya I don't even remember what it was called it was beautiful okay so these are dry in here in the moss those are gonna need a little bit of water but otherwise I might just give them a tiny little sippy sip um, but they're doing okay up here. They're not going to thrive without like some light. These leaves are turning. <laughs> they're turning towards the light for sure. But, um, I'm just going to get, I think, two like lights to go across the top here and let the rest be ambient and, you know, get whatever it can from the grow lights because I want to, um, have some of my lower light ones up here. I've got some Mexicanum nodes in here that are hopefully doing well. Yeah, they are. Look at they're growing. Haha, <laughs> they're sprouting little leaves. That is so cute. That is so stinking cute. I love that. Okay, let me close this back up. So they can stay nice and humid. Look at the little guy. But, um, yeah, everything's doing okay in here for the most part. It doesn't really need to be watered. I probably need to water everything in the greenhouse, but I'm not going to do that right now. This is my bag of <laughs> dead leaves. I did repot some of these Hoya that need to go somewhere. I've just been leaving them here because they're getting more light from the grow light over in the greenhouse than they would be if I put them in the cabinet but I do need to sort that out so um yeah I don't really know you guys I have one one more thing that I can show you really quickly because we are almost gonna hit 15,000 subscribers and when we do I'm gonna do a giveaway and the plant that you can win in said giveaway is this gorgeous Monstera, if I could get the lighting to be good, Monstera Thai Constellation. Isn't she cute? She doesn't have a ton of irrigation, but she's still really cute. Um, and she's got some really nice potential. So. If you want to win this Monstera Thai Constellation, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. It helps if you are publicly subscribed so that I can actually see you and verify that you're subscribed. 
to my channel but um yeah that is that is the plant that i'm gonna be giving away once we get there so definitely make sure you're subscribed like i said and if you're publicly subscribed it's just going to be easier because then i can verify that you actually are subscribed to my channel if you have it private then i won't be able to see it so um yeah i don't really know i don't really know what else i don't feel like repotting anything <laughs> I really mostly just wanted to show you some updates so I guess this wasn't really like a plant chore video it was really more of like hey here's how stuff is going but hopefully you enjoyed it I am so obsessed with <laughs> that sport variegated monster you guys I am still in shock that I even found it so um yeah that is really it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me today Tomorrow I have a very, very long plant shopping video for you, so I figured today we would just take it easy and hang out a little bit while I show you and talk to you about some of my plants. Um, so if you enjoyed hanging out with me, you should give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me. There is a join button down there if you want to be part of the official plant fam. Get yourself some perky perks if not there's a super thanks button if you want to super thanks me everything is appreciated i can't do this without you guys which is why i want to give you this plant so make sure you're subscribed so you can win this cute little monster tycon i would love for it to go to somebody who doesn't um already have one because i know it's definitely something that you guys want and you might not have access to so yeah, that is it for this video. I love you guys so, so very much. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are out there in the world. And don't forget to spread kindness. Don't forget to drink your water. And I will see you in the next one.